Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, and welcome to a very special video, and I say special because I don't think I've ever done a video like this before where I just sit here, unedited, raw, and talk to you a little guys a little bit about what's going on in counter strike -y stuff, or anything for that matter. So this time, obviously, the big thing going on is that the changes made in the winter update to the rifles and the pistols have been rolled back. Now, that's huge. There's all this controversy going around. You guys probably all saw my video talking about the recent update and the revolver and everything that happened and the rifle changes. Uh, originally, I thought the rifle changes were moving the wrong direction. However, the pistol changes, even though they probably could have been ironed out a little bit better than they were, that instead of just blanket carpet bombing, have them. They were doubling all of the inaccuracy of all of them. Uh, could have been handled much better. Uh, I still think that the pistols kind of made sense, so I, I was okay with that. But the rifle one was the big one. I think everybody can agree with that. They recently posted a blog post. By the way, guys, if you followed me on Twitter, I wouldn't have to make this video because I tweeted about it. And I said, go look at the thing. So follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash thewarowl. I think that's what it is. Anyway, they have a little blog post out here. I haven't read it yet, so I'm going to read it here live and give you my live reaction to the stuff that's coming out here about this change. I bet everyone's just like right now going, yeah, who didn't know about the change, who uh, or rather didn't know that they changed it back, and they were like, oops, my bad, are probably very happy right now because this was not a popular change. Most people, the vast majority of people were very upset. I don't know if anybody actually supported the change. I don't know if there's any voice out there who was like, yeah, Rifle nerf, more inaccuracy, more randomness to the game. Anyway, they called it recovery time, which I love. Recovery time, because of course that's the change they made to the rifles, but it's also a fun little, oh, they gotta recover from this, um, from this little mistake that they made. So they said, we made some adjustments to the rifles recently, and those changes have been causing a lot of pain in the Counter-Strike community. These poor guys, I feel so bad for the developers if they just turned on Reddit and seen the vitriol being spewed at them or looked at JonTron's Twitter feed. I feel so bad for them because they really are working to try to make this game great. It's just like we want the game to be great. They're not antagonists in this story. They need to work with us, though. The pain was the result of a few mistakes we made. Admitting their mistakes, that's nice. And while we usually prefer to avoid disrupting conversations happening in the community, we wanted to talk about some of the thinking that led to the recent changes as well as our plan for moving forward. So this is damage control, ladies and gentlemen. They probably need some damage uh, changes on some of the weapons. <laughs> Actually, I'm fine. I, I was fine with Counter-Strike. Like, my personal opinion, I thought it was balanced and I thought it was great. I didn't think any of the changes really needed to be made, but I can see how tweaking it uh, if they want to uh, try to improve the game, I it was fine for me, though. I didn't think it needed to be changed at all. But I do like this, that Valve, they exist in the shadows, right? They're there. They're watching. I think some of them even see my videos, because some of the things they've done have directly related to stuff I've talked about in my videos, which is awesome that there's that kind of uh, an interaction. Um, so if you're watching, hi, guys. Thanks for making this game that I have wasted my life playing. I haven't gone outside in weeks, man. Years. I've been doing this for years now. Goodness. Anyway, thank you guys. I was going to say keep up the good work, but uh, based on this last one, how about this? We'll work together. We'll work together. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll make it. All right, so it's, why change the rifles at all? So this is their explanation as to why they did it originally. In CSGO, spraying is generally considered the most popular way of firing a rifle. Yes, that is because the vast majority of players are not great at the game. And that is part of the game being so difficult to learn and master. And just it being a great game that has so much depth to it. Um, spraying is the easiest way to fire them. So I would assume that a vast majority of players just spray every time using the weapons. They spray and pray. It says, we can see this pretty clearly in the rifle data that we collect internally, and it's something we hear the community discussing frequently. By the way, I would like to point out that spraying is more viable in 64 tick servers. And it's very possible that they're collecting this data only from the 64 tick servers and not from 128 tick servers where you can land an accurate tap. 64 tick servers, they're not good enough for the top level of competition where you're going to be using those advanced techniques. That's my opinion on it. And I think that may have been what skewed their data and caused them to, to change it around. Moving on. Because we think it's valuable for players to have choices when they're thinking about how to engage an opponent, I don't think anybody ever thinks about that, though. When you're engaging an opponent, you just do. You have prepared. You have practiced. You know your technique. Anyway, we looked at ways to, to make tapping, bursting a bit more appealing. The hope was that by encouraging more deliberate firing, we would add something skillful that the player could use to their advantage. 128 tick servers, 
more people want to tap and burst. Also, if, if there a change need to be made to try to encourage that, maybe in improving the precision of the weapons, the AK-47 and the M4. Um, they're not super precise. Sometimes you go for the tap, you know you're right on them, but you still don't hit the shot. So maybe making it easier to actually land that headshot would improve the people wanting to tap shoot with it. So this is, as a first step forward, this goal... Wait, wait, wait. Oh, as a first step toward this goal, I apologize, I read it improperly there. We're not editing this, so this is going in. We increased recovery time for the AK-47, M4A4, and M4A1S. For a detailed breakdown of the... Oh, he has links to something, uh, a community post on Reddit. Ah, they do read Reddit. I feel so bad. God, I had to stop reading Reddit, because they're just nasty people over there. Anyway, unfortunately, our implementation failed in a few ways. For one thing, increasing inaccuracy while spraying also comes with reduced accuracy for all forms of firing. Well, yes... Obviously. Uh, proportionally, spraying was the most impacted, and we underestimated the impact that this chain would have on players who were already firing in short bursts. I don't think the change was that great for that, and I think it did impact spraying, but I don't think that the change was ever needed in the first place, because it creates randomness. Um, anyways, as it turns out, the adjustments didn't achieve either goal. Our rifle data shows players in all skill groups are still spraying more than tapping or bursting. Yes, because they are noobs. Oh, he said in all skill groups, so they're looking at the global leap. But still, same that. Yeah, we went over that stuff anyway. Okay. Okay. Spraying is not actually, and I, I know I've been saying noob, noob, noob the whole time. Spraying's not a newbie way to fire the gun. Uh, because you have to learn the spray patterns, and the more uh, predictable the spray patterns are, if you see it doing a certain pattern or it's going a specific way, like it does in Counter-Strike CSGO, where it kind of goes the exact same way every single time with a little bit of variance to it, there's a lot of skill that goes into memorizing and learning how to do those sprays and incorporating the movement into it at the same time. Um, it is really difficult, and it has real high uh, skill ceiling to it in terms of uh, spraying. So there's nothing wrong, I don't think, with spraying as a mechanic. I don't think it's just like, that's newbie, let's do bursting more. Even though I will tend to do the bursting and tap shooting at the longer distances, even close range sometimes. Uh, a lot of people spraying, and certain play styles are different. For example, Get Right. That guy always sprays. He sprays, he sprays up close, he strafes back and forth. He's got it going, because he has learned, he has taken the time to figure out uh, the spray patterns and how it works to be able to predict where those rounds are going. And just increasing your damage per second uh, at the expense of a little bit of possible accuracy sometimes can be a big benefit. And it is in Counter-Strike Global Offensive in particular. So they say, what's next? So there's nothing wrong with spraying. He said, what's next? It's difficult to measure the impact on gameplay when too much changes at one... Wait, wait, I, I read this wrong. I'm an idiot. It's difficult to measure the impact on gameplay when too much changes at once. No, that's proper. I read it right, I just, I, my brain interpreted it wrong. Anyway, the winter update came with some really huge changes to gameplay, including a new weapon, an adjustment to pistols, and the rifle changes, since we likely changed too much too quickly, you think? In today's update, we're rolling back both the rifle and pistol adjustments to their pre-winter update states. Honestly, guys, I think that they, we need to think a little bit more about the pistol changes as well, because the Tech 9, even after the changes, you can still spray and pray with it just fine. Um... And the one-tap accuracy on the P2000 and all those other weapons uh, being nerfed, it hurts those weapons even more. Um, the Glock was already completely impossible to use. This just made it even worse. Because the Glock was a weapon where you, you try to get up close and personal and, and spray it. Um, because of it, it just increasing that kind of made it even more difficult to use. So maybe doing a little bit more to the Tech 9 and a little bit less to the Glock, for example, that's one example, maybe it would have been a better idea instead of just a blanket times two to all the values or, or half all the values that they did. Just think about it a little bit more. Good. We failed to anticipate the reaction of the community to changes in such heavy use weapons. And we, yeah, heavy use, like the AK 40 freaking 7. And we clearly need to reevaluate our process of making and communicating about changes in that space. Yes, and I want to touch on that in just a second because I've been pitching an idea over and over again. And I think we're going to get that now because it seems like we're headed in that direction. Um, we still, sorry about the movements and stuff. I'm excited. I'm doing a vlog, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like if you. <laughs> Whoa! I hope that didn't affect the microphone. <laughs> it's like an earthquake went on in here. I think the camera got messed up. Anyway, um, I bet if you tied my arms to the desk, I wouldn't be able to speak anymore. We failed to anticipate the reaction of the community to changes in such heavy... I already read that. We're constantly reading community feedback. I'm sorry. And while we don't often respond directly, understanding the community is one of the most important aspects of working on CSGO. Mistakes happen, but when they do, we're committed to making sure they get fixed. Well, thank you, guys. That actually 
makes a lot of sense. I hope that will reassure a bunch of people that the, the developers are on the same team as us. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, I felt, when I saw that they changed, they rolled everything back, I was like, that's good for the game. But at the same time, I thought, aww. Because they tried something, and they had to fall back because of the community reaction. I'm sure a bunch of community people are celebrating as a result of that. Like, yeah, that'll show them. But again, I still think this is a, it's a community effort. The community provides the feedback. It seems like, and that's gonna say, Valve has been paying a lot of close attention, not to, or as far as I can see, is not to what people say but rather what their data shows them. They do a lot of data mining. They do a lot of statistical analysis. I have a little bit of a background in that area. I just like to put that out there. I, um, I, I probably shouldn't say the companies that I've worked for, but yes, I have a little bit of background in that area. In fact, when I was in college, my senior uh, uh, the thesis thingy, wasn't a the whatever you call it, had to do with data mining. But, and I worked for one of the biggest, most well, if I said the name, you would know what companies that did that stuff. But anyway, I don't think that you can rely just on that data, especially considering you're just looking at the matchmaking values. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that reliable. I think the most reliable thing is going to be feedback directly from people who know what they're talking about. And there's a lot of really smart people who go over these numbers, who do their own experiments and figure this stuff out. And I think they should be included in that process beyond just lurking on Reddit and reading their threads. Um, what I've been suggesting for a long time is making a public test build. So I think Dota 2 has one, so it's obviously within their, their abilities. It's not beyond their limitations. And I think it would make a lot of sense, because then they could push these changes as sort of a test. It's a fun little test environment, right? They've come up and they said, all right, here's our crazy, wacky idea. Let's change all the pistols. All right. They throw that out there. People see it. People react to it. Now, I could see why they wouldn't do it in the Counter-Strike community in particular, because Counter-Strike community it tends to be completely opposed to any form of change whatsoever. So they decide to make these changes, they push it out there, and everyone goes, bleh, and then they still push them through because they think it's a good idea. People will be really, really mad and say, oh, Valve didn't listen to us. But I think it's best to just ignore that kind of stuff because it's good to have that feedback, it's good to have these people look over this stuff beforehand so that messes like this and all of the other weapon messes that we've had do not happen. Now, all the other weapon messes have eventually been fixed over time, but it causes this big controversy and all this nastiness and I have to roll everything back and change the values. We had the week where the Deagle was super overpowered. It was a two-hit kill to the chest, very reminiscent of the Revolver. We had the week where the Auto Shotty was ridiculously overpowered and everybody used it in matchmaking, which was hilarious. It would be best to not have this stuff go live. It would be best to not test these things in production while there's people trying to play the game and enjoy it. Maybe this is the only weekend they get to play. And they get to play during the weekend where they're everything, everybody's using a revolver in deathmatch and it's ridiculous. That's no fun. People aren't going to like that. And there's tournaments going on as well. You have to consider that and be like, uh. But at least provide a way for them to roll it back so that the tournaments don't have to use the new settings that they just push out. But yeah. If you have it, and people will do it. People will definitely do the uh, the test build, the beta build, or whatever you want to call it, because it gives you a leg up. If you see some changes to the AK-47, for example, everybody's going to want to jump in there and try out the AK-47 and get ahead and get that knowledge so they can stay ahead of the curve. It's a great idea to do that, for example. And I, a lot of people want to give their own feedback. They can make their own uh, method for interaction for feedback from that. I just think it would be a great idea to test these things out. People will find the bugs. There were tons of bugs that were released in this as well. People found them very quickly, within 24 hours. So, just leverage. Yeah, Ar Valve, you got an army of nerds who want to help out, who want this game to be awesome. Use us. We're here. We're ready. We, we're the same as you guys. We just, we're, do, we're doing other things. That, oh, I'm not doing other things. I'm doing Counter-Strike. But it's like, we have PhDs. We have degrees. We have played games our whole lives. We know how to do the numbers. We can help. There's a ton of people who want to help out. I don't have a PhD, though. I was just, as an example, I'm sure some people out there do. Anyway. <clears throat> Thank you folks very much for watching. Let me know if you want to see more of these types of videos where I just kind of blabber for 15 minutes. I'm the War Owl, and I still... Have no closer. Don't ya hate when they put jump cuts?
in a long